Hello, today we were going to go over a module that is going to be an introduction to simple linear regression. The outline for our module is going to first start off with the learning objectives, then we're going to review some past concepts and why we um, use modeling and the reason for modeling. Then we're going to go through the steps for simple linear regression, and then we're going to look at um, the data set that we'll be interested in looking at throughout this entire module series, which is from the Redfish Lake um, and the Sockeye Salmon. And then um, we'll introduce the research question of interest for us in this module. And then we're going to start looking at a scatter plot. And then we'll look ahead to the next module. So the learning objectives um, that students will be able to do by the end of this module is that students will be able to explain why we use statistical models, and students will be able to identify and describe the relationship between the response and explanatory variable of interest. So just to give us a sense of what are past concepts um, that you as the student will have learned up until this point in this course is that you will have already learned some data wrangling skills such as filtering, summarizing data, grouping rows together, creating a new variable from the existing variables, and sorting the rows and then combining um, certain types of data frames together. You'll also have gone over some exploratory data analysis skills, such as creating scatter plots or box plots. We'll have also have already talked about correlation values and what that means, and then also had gone over confounding variables and how that's important in terms of um, modeling. So why do we use statistical modeling? Um, we have this data set, and we want a way to understand and incorporate that into our research question of interest. So we use a statistical model as a way um, to kind of create a simplified mathematical formula to summarize the data so it's easier for us to work with rather than just a list of data points. And our model is going to be able to capture these true signals and patterns in our data and ignore the noise. We know that the variation is there in our data, the noise of the data. Um, but we really want to be able to capture that true pattern or single signal. Um, we have kind of two types of modeling in statistics. We have a predictive model, which is going to be the focus of our class. So we use these types of models in order to predict future values. We use it to kind of explain and understand what's going on in the data um, in order to kind of help inform um, future research and help us with um, research studies. Data discovery models are slightly different. They allow us to not kind of have any um, assumptions about what is going on in our data and allows the data to kind of um, kind of explain and uh, discover the new patterns and trends um, not based on any kind of hypotheses. So in this class, we're going to be working on a statistical model that is specifically called simple linear regression. So we're going to use um, our response variable um, and use it as a predictor. Um, we're going to predict the response variable as a linear function of our explanatory variable. So it's simple linear regression because all we're using is one explanatory variable to predict a response. So the steps for linear regression um, are kind of uh, seven steps that I have outlined here on the slides. And these steps are important for, for us to make sure that we um, hit all the boxes as we're going through linear regression and we don't forget anything. So our first step is to identify our research question. We don't ever want to go straight to creating a linear model without figuring out what we want to do. So we identify a research question, and then we graph the data. We always want to make sure that we have a picture of the data, see what's going on in the data, because it can sometimes um, inform and maybe alter our research question. And so once we have a research question that we're interested in and we've graphed the data and really understood what's going on, we want to then describe the relationship from the graph. And we really want to kind of estimate this location of the linear regression line so we get a sense um, of what, um, the, what we would kind of expect. And then we can check that when we actually run the linear regression in our computer. So um, the fourth step is we want to check our linear regression assumptions. We want to make sure that a linear model is correct. We don't have a type of curve um, in our data, because that would require us to do a different type of model. Um, and we also want to make sure that um, there's no um, particular violations of these linear regression assumptions of our data. Then our fifth step is we're going to use technology to find the best fit line. 
and we'll talk about that later in the module, what type of technology and how we're going to, what what it means to find the best fit line. And then six, we're going to interpret the regression coefficient. So that's the output um, that we found from our technology to um, fit this linear regression. So we're going to interpret those values, and then we're probably going to be able to use the model to make predictions. So the data set that we'll be going through throughout the rest of these modules is um, from Redfish Lake. Um, it's a data set of sockeye salmon. So you can see the a snippet of the data on the slides. Um, up in the corner is the picture of Redfish Lake. It's in Idaho, central Idaho. And you see a picture of the sockeye salmon on the bottom. So um, you can see that we have six variables. We have the year. Um, of the data that was collected, um, and we've collected whether the salmon were from the hatchery or the wild. We also collected their weight in grams, their fecundity, which is their average egg size for the females, and um, the average number of eggs for those females. And then we have the egg size of those um, female eggs um, in diameters, um, in a diameter in millimeters. And then we have the survival, so whether um, the, the fish survived or not. So there's a total of 44 observations from 1991 to 2012. So this data set was collected because um, the salmon that have to um, kind of migrate back to their um, uh, their original place where they um, reproduce, they have to go through a lot of dams. And so there was a problem um, back in the early 90s that these salmon um, were kind of dying and they were disappearing and they weren't coming back um, to Redfish Lake. And so um, this data set was collected over the years and we're going to answer a specific research question based on this data. So the reasons for using this data set is that um, it allows us to do four things that we'll do throughout the rest of these modules. It's going to allow us to start thinking about a relationship between an x and y variable from a scatter plot to get us start thinking about why we would use modeling. And then next, it'll allow us to do a simple linear regression. Um, and you will see that um, when we do the second module on simple linear regression, that um, there's other stuff that are going on that we want to investigate further. So then our next step is to kind of create the scatter plot with four variables from the data set rather than just two, and it'll allow us to get a sense of more what's going on in our data. And then the fourth um, reason is that we kind of do a hypothesis test between these two groups. So we'll be able to compare the weights between um, the hatchery and the wild um, types of salmon. So just a little background, in 1991, the sockeye salmon were under um, US, the U.S. Endangered Species Act. And so they started this hatchery-based gene rescue activity um, that was developed and implemented. And so they've collected this data over time and um, allows us to see what is going on with these salmon after they had implemented these rescue activities. So what we want to know, our research question is, what is the average fecundity, which is Y, predicted by the weight of the fish? Which which is our x variable sampled in individual years. So average fecundity is our response variable, and weight is going to be our explanatory variable. So here we have a scatter plot. So we have um, x, our x variable, our weight in grams on the x-axis, and then fecundity, or the average number of eggs, on the y-axis. And so as you can see, we have um, kind of data points um, kind of lower on the left side of the scatter plot. So in the lower weight, we kind of have a range of um, average number of eggs. And then we see a couple of outliers um, in the right-hand side of the graph at that higher weight. So some questions to ponder. So I have provided you with the correlation. Um, so the correlation between weight and fecundity is 0.19. And we have the scatter plot here. So I want you to take a couple of seconds and think about what can you say visually about the relationship between weight and fecundity in the sample of sockeye salmon. Are you looking at a positive or negative relationship? Is it strong or weak? And then after you've thought through that, I want you to draw where you think the linear regression line would go. 
So potential student thoughts that I think that they would respond to after pondering those questions is that they'd probably say that um, there's something going on with salmon that weigh less, they have a larger variation or a larger spread um, in fecundity compared to those heavier salmon. Um, students might also comment on the fact that there's a positive relationship between weight and fecundity. So they might say something like X increases as Y increases. Um, and since they have understood about we've talked about correlation, they'll say that the correlation is close to zero, so it means that there's probably a weak relationship between weight and, um, and fecundity. Um, they might also comment on those potential two outliers, um, and then um, I hope that they would um, graph the regression line, and I think they would probably put um, the regression line through those kind of two groups of points that we see on the graph. They might end up putting it a little bit higher or a little bit lower. So looking ahead to our next set of modules, um, we're going to be continuing on with simple linear regression. So in our next module, we're going to talk about checking linear regression assumptions, using technology to find that best fit line, interpreting those regression coefficients, and using the model to make predictions. Thank you.